A 15-speed power shift transmission is one of the new options available on 50 series row crop tractors. This 15-speed power shift is similar to the 8-speed power shift available on 40 series tractors, but some of its components and oil flows are much different. The power shift is a hydraulically controlled mechanical drive transmission. To help you become more familiar with the 15-speed power shift, this program will give you an overview of the transmission hydraulic control circuit. We'll point out the major components in the control circuit and show you what their internal parts look like. We'll also describe what each component does. By the time you're finished with this program, you should be able to identify the major components and briefly describe what each of them does. Let's begin with a look at how the hydraulic control circuit works with the mechanical components in the transmission. This block diagram shows the major components of the power shift drivetrain. The drivetrain consists of two traction clutches, C1 and C2, and two compound planetary packs, input and output. The input planetary pack is controlled by a brake and a clutch, B high and C low. The output planetary pack is controlled by four brakes, B1 through B4, and one clutch, C3. These clutches and brakes are engaged or disengaged in various combinations to produce 15 forward speeds and four reverse speeds. The hydraulic control circuit engages the clutches and brakes by directing the flow of oil to them. Springs in the transmission disengage the clutches and brakes. Placing the control lever in a certain speed, for example six forward, shifts the appropriate valves in the control circuit. The control circuit valves then direct oil to engage the various clutches and brakes that produce six forward. Six forward happens to be a combination of C2, C low, B2, and C3. If you need more detailed information about which clutches and brakes are engaged for any particular speed, consult your technical manual. Before getting into the control circuit valves, there are some terms we should define for you. When we talk about control circuit oil, there are three different types of oil. Transmission control pressure oil is oil that comes from the transmission pump and transmission filter. It's regulated to 175 PSI or 1200 kilopascal by a pressure regulating valve located in another housing. Engagement oil is oil that actually operates the clutches and brakes in the transmission. Pilot oil is oil that operates valves in the control circuit. We'd also like to point out how the term neutral is used on the power shift. There are actually three neutral positions. Here the speed selector lever is in the neutral neutral position. It's ready to be put in park. Here the speed selector lever is in the neutral reverse position. From neutral reverse it can be shifted into a reverse speed. In this position the speed selector lever is in the neutral forward position. From neutral forward, it can be shifted into a forward speed. Now with those preliminary details out of the way, we can start to look at the actual components in the control circuit. This is the transmission control valve housing. It's located on the right side of the transmission case. It contains most of the control circuit components. The rest of the components are bolted to the inside of the transmission control valve housing or they are in the transmission case. As we go through the rest of the components, keep an eye out for this cylinder. It will serve as a reference point to help you identify the location of different valves in the housing. We'll begin with the forward reverse valve because it's one of the first valves in the control circuit. We'll describe the other valves in roughly the order that they affect the oil flow. However, control circuit oil flow is very complex, and we don't mean to say that oil flows simply from one valve to another in order. As you might expect, the forward reverse valve determines if the transmission goes into forward or reverse. The valve is mechanically linked to the transmission control lever. Moving the control lever from side to side shifts the forward reverse valve between neutral 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 reverse and neutral forward. The linkage turns this side to side movement into an up and down movement at the valve. The linkage is a floating linkage. The sound guard body to which the control lever is attached can rock from side to side and back and forth without affecting the position of the forward reverse valve. 
This cutaway view shows where the forward reverse valve is located in the housing and what its internal components look like. Notice where it's located in relation to the cylinder. The valve has three positions. When the speed selector lever is in neutral neutral, no oil flows through the forward reverse valve. In neutral forward, the valve directs oil to other parts of the control circuit that determine transmission speed. In neutral reverse, it directs oil to other parts of the control circuit and it also directs engagement oil to a brake that puts the transmission into reverse. The rotary valve is the heart of the control circuit. It's the cylinder that we've been using as a reference point on the housing. A mechanical linkage connects the rotary valve with the speed selector lever. The linkage converts fore and aft movement of the speed selector lever to rotary motion of the rotary valve. Like the forward reverse linkage, this is a floating linkage. Even if the sound guard body rocks from side to side, it doesn't affect the rotary valve position. The cutaway view shows the gear mechanism that turns the rotary valve. As the rotary valve turns, it directs pilot oil to other valves in the control circuit. It generates 15 different oil flow conditions for the 15 forward speeds. Speeds 1 through 4 are also used for reverse. On other types of transmissions, the operator lets the clutch out slowly to start tractor motion smoothly. On the power shift transmission, the same thing is accomplished by neutral to gear modulation. Modulation means to control the flow of oil so that it does not start abruptly. Neutral to gear modulation takes place whenever the operator moves the control lever from neutral forward to any forward speed or from neutral reverse to any reverse speed. During neutral to gear modulation, these components regulate the flow of engagement oil to the clutches and brakes in the drivetrain. At first, they restrict the flow and then gradually let the flow increase. Because of this modulation, tractor motion begins smoothly over a period of about two seconds. The top component is the sump valve. The component on the left is the accumulator piston. The component on the right is the modulator valve. The next set of components we'd like to describe are the shift valves. These valves are located on the inner side of the transmission control valve housing, so you need to take the housing off to service them. Here you can see where the five shift valves are located inside their housing. Each shift valve is a two-position valve. The spring at the bottom of each valve normally keeps it in one position. Pilot oil pressure from the rotary valve directed to the top of any valve will shift it to the other position. The shift valves direct engagement oil to the various clutches and brakes in the drivetrain as well as other valves in the control circuit. Some valves direct oil to the other shift valves. The top valve is the C-low, B-high shift valve. There's also a C3, B4 shift valve, a B1, B2 shift valve, and a C1 and C2 shift valves. Don't let the names on the shift valves fool you, though. Oil flow is not as simple as you might think. The C3, B4 shift valve does direct engagement oil to either the C3 clutch or the B4 brake, and it does use pilot oil from the rotary valve to make that shift. However, the other valves do not operate that simply. Depending on their position, some shift valves direct oil to other shift valves or to other valves in the control circuit. Only the technical manual can provide you with exact detailed information about where these valves direct the flow of oil. The detented high-low shift valve directs engagement oil to either the C-low clutch or the B-high brake in the input planetary. This valve, in turn, is controlled by the C-low, B-high shift valve in the shift valve housing. If you look closely, you can see the spring, ball, and detent. These parts lock the detented high-low shift valve in one position until it's pushed into the other. By being in one position or another, the detented high-low shift valve prevents a neutral condition in the input planetary. It ensures that either the C-low clutch or the B-high brake will always be engaged. The pilot pressure shift valve works with the rotary valve. It goes to work when the operator shifts from forward to reverse. The spring on the right hand keeps the pilot pressure shift valve in its normal position, forward. When the operator shifts into reverse, pilot oil from the forward reverse valve shifts this valve over to the right. 
This move assists the rotary valve in selecting reverse speeds. Up to this point, you've seen the valves that determine which clutches and brakes receive engagement oil. They determine the transmission speed. You've also seen neutral to gear modulation, which controls the rate the tractor goes into motion. The chart shows how fast the tractor will travel in each of the 15 forward speeds. Notice that in the first 11 speeds, the difference from one to another is not all that great. At these lower speeds, shifting from one speed to the next higher one is fairly smooth and quick. There is no hesitation when shifting under load. But with speeds 12 to 15, which are the transport speeds, there's quite a jump from one to the next. A shift from speed 12 to speed 15 could be a neck snapping experience unless the transmission did it smoothly. This next group of valves work together to make that kind of shift a smooth one. We'll look at the orificing valve first. It smooths out the shifts from speed to speed by restricting the flow of engagement oil. The orificing valve is a two position valve. At speeds 1 to 11 forward, engagement oil flows unrestricted through the valve. At speeds 12 to 15 though, the orificing valve shifts to its other position. In that position, engagement oil has to flow through a small orifice. You can see the orifice in the land at the end of the valve spool. By restricting the flow of engagement oil during shifts at transport speed, the orificing valve helps make those shifts smoother. The components shown here make up the modulating valve housing. They work with the orificing valve to smooth out shifts in transport speeds. The modulating valve housing consists of two metering valves and two accumulator pistons. At speeds 1 through 11 forward, a small amount of oil flows by the valves, but they don't affect the flow to the transmission elements. At speeds 12 through 15, the accumulators and metering valves start working together to affect the flow of engagement oil. The modulator valve assembly is actually a parallel path for the flow of oil. At first, very little oil flows to the transmission elements. As the accumulators fill, more oil flows to the transmission. The result is that the brakes and clutches engage slowly and smoothly. These last components, the system accumulators, complete our overview of the control circuit. The system accumulators make sure there is an adequate supply of pressure oil when the transmission shifts from one speed to another. There is also an accumulator for the C3 clutch. To review, let's take one more look at each component. The transmission control valve housing is on the right side of the transmission case. It holds most of the control circuit components. The forward reverse valve is mechanically linked to the speed selector lever. It directs engagement oil to put the transmission in forward or reverse. The rotary valve is mechanically linked to the speed selector lever too. It produces 15 distinct oil flow conditions and it sets the speed of the transmission. The function of these components is neutral to gear modulation. Neutral to gear modulation occurs when the operator shifts from neutral to a forward or reverse speed. It produces a smooth start, like letting up slowly on a clutch pedal. The shift valves control the flow of engagement oil to the clutches and brakes in the drivetrain. They are controlled by pilot oil from the rotary valve. The detented high-low shift valve is a two-position valve that stays in one position until it is pushed to the other. It controls the B-high brake and C-low clutch in the input planetary, making sure that one or the other is always engaged. The pilot pressure shift valve works with the rotary valve to select tractor speeds. It's controlled by the forward reverse valve. The orificing valve restricts the flow of engagement oil in speeds 12 to 15. It helps smooth out shifts in transport speeds. The modulating valve housing components also work to make shifts in transport speeds smooth. And finally, the system accumulators make sure there is an adequate supply of control circuit oil during shifts from one speed to another. By now you should be more familiar with the hydraulic control circuit for the 15-speed power shift transmission. You should be able to identify and locate the components in the control circuit and briefly describe their functions. If you need information about how the power shift works mechanically, you should watch the Pathfinder program on that subject. If you need detailed information about oil flows in the hydraulic control circuit, refer to the schematic diagrams in your technical manual. 
The 15-speed power shift transmission is a complex, sophisticated piece of machinery. But with care and patience, you'll be able to use the information in your technical manual to perform effective and efficient service work on it.